Hello. There are several ways to, to calculate a square root in decimal form, and, uh, and every way but one uses some sort of approximation technique. Um, the approximation technique would take a, uh, a, a number that's a guess or an approximation of the square root and feed it into this uh, mathematical process that would uh, get you closer and closer and closer to the exact decimal form of the square root. Uh, one of these is called the uh, Newton's method from calculus, for example. But there is one method that's purely algebraic that will give you the square root of a number in decimal form precisely decimal by decimal. You can get it exactly decimal by decimal. It used to be taught in the public schools. I learned it back in 1968 when I was in seventh grade. And um, back then it was, was kind of nice to know because without electronic calculators, you either had to look up a square root in a table or if you wanted something more precise, you had to calculate it to more decimal places. So um, it was uh, actually a necessary tool back in those days. Okay, uh, and with electronic calculators, we don't, we don't do that anymore. Well, here's how it's done. Let's take the square root of, of 3, for example. So, square root of 3. And I'm going to extend this, this line out like this. And uh, here's our decimal place. And I'm going to put pairs of zeros up here. I don't know if I'll get quite that far, but we'll see what happens here. Okay. Um, now, the first thing we do is look for the largest perfect squared number that's less than 3. And that would be 1. 1 times 1 is, of course, 1. And I'll put the 1 here for show. And then we subtract and get 2. Then I bring down the other two zeros. So, I couldn't put 2 here because 2 times 2 would be 4, which is greater than 3. Alright, so 1 times this number is, of course, 1. I subtract bring down the first pair of zeros, and now we come to the other weird step. I'm going to double this last digit, and that becomes a 2, and I'm going to place, um, I'll put a little underline here because I have to fill in this blank, and we fill in this blank with the digit that we put up here. So, for example, if I put a 7 up here, I need to put a 7 there. Now it turns out 7 is the largest digit I can put up here, so that's 7 times this number, 2 and that digit, will be less than 200. And so let's do that. 7 times 27 is um, 189. So you can see if I put an 8, 8 times 28 is uh, well over 200. And uh, 6 would be too small, so the largest, the closest I can get to 200 is putting a 7 up here, putting the 7 there and multiplying. All right, so we're going to subtract. Again, like long division, we, we subtract next. We'll get an 11. And now I'm going to bring down these two zeros. And at this point, we're going to, again, double the last digit. So I'm going to double the 7, and that gives me 14. Now the 14 carries a 1 with a 2, so that becomes a, a 3. <clears throat> so, um, double the 7, 14, carry 1 with a 2, and you get a 3. And it's going to be 340-something, dividing into 1,100. By the way, another way of looking at this is 2 times 17 is 34. It's another way of doing this. Okay, well, 340-something uh, divides into 1,100 about 3 times, so I'm going to put a 3 here. And then multiply 3 times 343. I get a 9, let's see, 12, um, 10, 10, 29. Okay, then we subtract. I get a 71. And again, we bring down the next pair of zeros. So now my, my, my um, uh, dividend is 7,100. The divisor is going to be, um, I have to double this 3, so it becomes a 6, so now it's 346, but then I have to place another digit here, and so, you know, it's starting to look pretty repetitive, I'm sure, too. 
The next digit would be, it looks like a 2, because uh, 3,460 something divides into 7,100 about two times. So I put a 2 here. And then we multiply 2 times 3,462. Get a 4. Uh, 12, carry the 1, 8, that's 9, 6. And when we subtract, we get um, 176. All right. Well, um, I'll just really don't have much room for another step, but you would bring down the zeros. Again, double the last digit, 3, 4, 6, 4, blank. And, and notice that these, this 3464 is two times 1732. So that's, again, a different way of, of confronting this funny little process where we double this last digit. All right, well... Um, 34,640-something will not divide into 17,600. It would go zero times, so my next digit would be a zero. And we would simply bring down another two zeros. And then we would double the zero and get zero, and then we'd add another place. So on and so forth. Well, I'm running out of, running out of room, of course. But uh, hopefully you've um, caught on to this pattern. Um, the reason this pattern works, now I wondered this for many years, and, uh, and I, I recently figured it out. It's why it works. It is, of course, is algebra. And the algebra is uh, quite a lot. Uh, we fill up several pages, and so it's um, certainly I can't present it here. But uh, there is um, clearly an algebra basis for this. works every time. Um, a little observation here. One thing you learn in, in algebra is that these numbers, square roots of integers, which are not perfect squares, like square root of 3, are called irrational. And irrational numbers have two decimal features. They, their decimal, decimals go on forever, and there's no pattern. And uh, it's kind of easy to, to justify it. It goes on forever, that part, because you're never going to get a zero remainder. Every time you multiply by a digit, that's not zero. A digit times itself is never going to end in zero, unless it is zero. But if you multiply by zero, then you have to go on to the next step. So you never do reach a remainder of zero. That's why these irrational numbers go on forever. Explaining why there's no pattern, that's a different story. And uh, perhaps, perhaps another video. So uh, there you go. Now you, you know how to calculate square roots by hand. And, and if you're curious, can, can this be done with cube roots? Cube roots? I believe it can. Um, I hope to figure that out one of these days also. And if I do, I'll, I'll add a video about cube roots. There is a, there is a way to do it, but it's, um, I think it's a quite a bit more complicated than this.